We are the highest rated cooking show in Nevada County on public access. Hey. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to Let's Get Cooking. I'm your host, John Voorhees. And if you're seeing this right now, it must be Thursday at 11 because that's when we air on cable. We've got a very exciting show for you today. But before we get to our guest uh, chef, I'd like to announce that here it is just our second show. The ratings have come in, and we are the highest rated cooking show in Nevada County on public access. So let's hear it from the studio audience. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, today we're going to push the envelope a little bit. Uh, no one was more surprised than I when Maddie, our producer, told us what we were going to be making today. Um, so fire up your Grateful Dead if that's your jam, uh, because today on Let's Get Cooking, we're going to do some shrooms. And to help us with that, let me introduce Rich Fisher. Uh, Rich, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. I've been a Nevada County resident since uh, 1991. I've been a, I opened up a gallery here. I've been a glass blower for many years, so I had a gallery here for many years. I also have a, an Ayurvedic pharmacy that I do custom formulas for. Oh, wow, cool. And this year, co-producing the Fringe Festival. Ah, the Fringe Festival. I can't wait to hear more about that. Uh, and so what are we making today officially? Rick? Today we're doing stuffed portobello mushrooms. Stuffed portobello mushrooms. And um, let's get started. If you don't mind, where sure. do we start with a stuffed portobello right. mushroom? Well, I'll start by sauteing. We're going to just saute all the filling. OK. And I, I like using olive oil and butter. All right. Uh, they both impart different flavors. And the olive oil allows it to cook a little bit hotter for the butter. Okay, uh, and, and olive oil and butter, and these are calorie free, if it's my Oh, ab absolutely. Right. Oh, always, okay. always going to be. And now, what are, the, are these the actual mushrooms themselves? These, these are the point of olive oil. Well, we saved that for the end. We're not doing that right now. We're not stuffing those yet. We're, uh, we're going to make okay. the filling first. All right. So we start with uh, the olive oil and the butter. We're adding gar fresh garlic. Okay. I'm a big garlic fan. I noticed that uh, when I met you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep my distance. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything, but I said this guy. Yeah. And onion. All right, garlic and onion. We're sauteing it. Not uh, much better aroma in the world than no. sauteing garlic and onion and olive oil and butter. Oh, uh, don't get me started. Boy, oh boy, the times I've had sauteing garlic and onion. Um, now, we're going to let this heat up, I guess, a little bit right. here. Uh, let's talk about the mushrooms themselves. Now, when you, where do you get your mushrooms? Do you go out to a rural field? Do you know the right time of mushrooms to look for? Or where do you find these? Uh, I, I do go to the grocery store. <laughs> oh, they am at the grocery store. Now, you know, things are changing. Right? I, I have uh, actually had a little training on, on hunting mushrooms. Uh, but frankly, even the professionals rarely eat what they find because this can be pretty iffy. And, They're chicken. And, yeah, I'm, I'm not willing to take, yeah, take that no, risk. No. But, but I like the fact that here we are. This is my first time uh, doing mushrooms. And I'm glad that we have a guide to take us through the process. I, I will guide you through. I think we're very, very lucky that way. So thank you very much for that. Now, one bit of advice for mushrooms. Uh, a lot of people wash their mushrooms. Uh, never. Don't ever wash your mushrooms. Don't wash your mushrooms. Uh, they are grown in manure most of the time. You buy these mushroom brushes and you brush off any of the dirt. Uh, if you wash a mushroom, it takes out all the water and it will dilute the flavor of the mushroom hugely. I so, did not know that. So don't wash mushrooms ever. Uh, always just brush them off with a mushroom brush and get these at any, most grocery stores have now little gourmet shops. Now, how strongly do you feel about this? Can I wash the brush when I'm done with it? Or do you, feel, do you have strong feelings about that, too? Yes, please wash the brush. No, you can wash the brush, <laughs> but we're not washing. So that's funny, because my mushrooms, when I've prepared non-portobello, they always have a soapy taste. And I imagine that's from washing them. You're saying you're yeah, very well good, yes. Yeah, don't do that anymore. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're sizzling them slightly there. Yeah, it's taking a little while to get up. Um, so, you know, it might be faster if we just go and put these out in the sun, and maybe they'll go <laughs> sizzle a little bit faster there. Yeah, we're not getting a lot of heat action here, yeah. but uh, we'll give it a few more minutes. And, you know, well, that's one thing. If you are working on a hot plate, as we're doing today, uh, one thing you might want to check and make sure you actually plug it in, because, boy, does that make a difference in how hot the plate gets. So, uh, just look into that. In our case, ours has a little orange light that indicates that it's uh, 
I guess, on. It, 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 anyway, it's just a read the user stuff. manual. I don't want to speak for all hot plate manufacturers there. Um, okay, so while that's heating up, is there anything we can do in the interim, or is everything yes. going in the pan? Well, let's see. I'm going to uh, use the garlic and the onion in here, and uh, red bell peppers next. Okay. And the idea to chop a really, really similar size. Uh, it cooks at the same rate that way. A lot of people, if they don't uh, cut things up in a similar oh. size, big chunks, little chunks, cooks very unevenly. You'll have things that are not as tender, or things that are that makes too, too cooked. That so, makes and we seem to be having some heat here. And there so we go. We've got some success here going. Nice. We're going to put the red bell pepper in. So it's very colorful. And it's color. The, the red bell, I mean, if you need any kind of bell pepper, the reds are a little sweeter. So it has just another sure. part of the flavor to it. All right, nice to see that moving around. Get that a little bit hotter before we put the mushrooms in. Oh, wait a minute. You're stuffing. Maybe you're going a little too fast for me. It sounded to me like you're going to be stuffing mushrooms with mushrooms. Yes. But you're not going to stuff these mushrooms, so it's just a. Uh, one off. Right, these mushrooms are going to be mixed in with this, and then all the filling with the pesto and the spices and the cheeses goes uh, inside the house. Okay, all right. And what type of mushrooms are these again? These are cremini. Cremini. They're, they're uh, pretty commonly available in the grocery store. Uh, a lot more flavor than the white button mushrooms. Ah. A lot more flavor. They're basically uh, like, a, like a mini portobello flavor wise. Ah. Okay, let me put you on the, on the spot here. How would you describe the taste of a cremini mushroom? Uh, <laughs> I don't know that's not a question. Is that sort of a mushroomy uh, taste, would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a mushroomy taste. Something yeah, like that. that. It's, it's, it's certainly earthier. It, uh, it develops a lot more flavor when you put it into a white mushroom. Oh, ah, all right. Uh, so in fact, the, as you cook it in land, it'll bring a lot more flavor to it than the white mushrooms. Very good. So white mushrooms, the, the generic ones, they're a little more bland maybe than the other types of mushrooms. You can You're going to add a little more olive oil. All right. Yeah, I hear it going now. Add a little more butter. And I'm really glad you turned the hot plate on because, again, it's just a half hour show. So um, <laughs> you know, if the hot plate weren't on, this might be uh, three, four, or five hours. Makes a big difference. Now that this is getting hot, I'll add uh, some spices. All right, tell me, what's in, what spices are you adding? This is a mixture of oregano and thyme and rosemary. All right. And basil. I knew a girl named Rosemary years ago, but probably a different uh, concept there. <laughs> All right, so we got oregano, basil, rosemary, and thyme. We're adding in. Season to taste. Oregano from my garden. Oh, wow. Nice, and the, homegrown. And the pesto that we're adding is also homemade. Home, home our basil oh, and oh, very nice our homemade basil. Okay. okay. I'll add most of these mushrooms now. Maybe. And another thing with mushrooms, besides not washing them, you, you until they're well cooked, you don't want to add much salt. Because salt actually brings, up, brings out the moisture too quickly. Okay. And you can get really sort of watery. So if you let it cook and brown a little bit first, then add whatever salt you're adding, whether it's actual salt or soy sauce, uh, the mushrooms don't get watery. I, so remember, don't wash your mushrooms out there uh, in your kitchen. People will talk, and certainly don't let your neighbors know that you wash your mushrooms. And hold off on the salt, is what I'm hearing, right? Indeed. A little bit later on. You'll, you'll have a lot more flavorful mushrooms. No, that's why, who doesn't like a flavorful mushroom? I know I will. Yeah, a little bit more. This. Nice. So I'd say probably, you know, equivalent to about a teaspoon and a half all together. Of your spices. Okay, good. Here, we're get that cooked a little bit more. All right. We'll be adding... Some, bait, uh, some pesto into this. Now, to prepare the mushrooms for stuffing, basically you want to take out the stem and you want to scoop out the spores. All right, we're scooping out spores. Um, 
That, that's a single portobello mushroom. Correct. And I'm wondering, what do you think is the appropriate dosage for uh, for your guests? Would you be would they take as much as a single mushroom, maybe half a mushroom? If it's their main part of the meal, yes. Yeah, I, I would say at least one whole mushroom per person. Okay, show me how you take these spores out. You just the food is with a spoon. And they're poisonous, that's why you're taking them out? Uh, no, basically there's not much flavor to them. Oh, okay. And occasionally they can be bland or bitter, but we will make a lot more room for so. Oh, smart. Okay, so these are spores. Everyone see that? Okay, yeah, the, the, gill, the gills hold the spores, which are the, the seed of the mushrooms. Man, you're all over the place. First it's spores, now it's gills. Yeah, it actually is it's actually gills that are quick cleaning out. Oh, all right. You don't mind if I clean out uh, these gills, sir? Go for it. I don't know. That was a gill cleaner from a long time ago. I can tell you've done this before. Oh, yeah. That's not true, actually. This is my first time. Okay. Yeah, you're faster later. Yes, well, the, the other gills I've worked on have been connected to the tough fish. Okay. Yeah. Uh, normally, Those have gills. Gills. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, this is nothing fish like at all. No, it's not really. I guess they float on the water. Mm -hmm. You go ahead and saute. I'm just going to stay here with the gills and get this going. I'm going to add a couple teaspoons, or uh, about a tablespoonful of uh, pesto. Homemade pesto, right? The pesto generally is basil, uh, pine nuts, olive oil, Parmesan cheese. And uh, homemade basil, right? Is that you shared with us? Yep. And uh, how did your pine nut crop turn out this year? <laughs> That's the one part that I don't do. Ah, <laughs> see? Wonderful. It, it, it's it, beautiful. The pinion pines don't grow here. Uh, Listen, if you're going to use big words like that, we should have gotten that squared away before we started here, all right? You and your, with your pine nuts. I did use, when I lived in Southern California, I used to collect my little pine nuts. Really? Yep. Now, do you wash those, or do you not wash them over either? They're real hard to unshell, basically. You, you, know, you go to a pinion pine tree, and you take like a pedal log or a bat, and you end up hitting the tree. Uh, so got, it's real hard. It's the only hard that grows in the... Uh, Colorado area. Okay. And the nuts fall. Because you hit it with the tree. Is that a common uh, hobby down there, the tree hitting? Uh, <laughs> if you're looking for pi pinion pine nuts, yes. Pinion pine nuts, yeah, that's how they roll. Me? I did, not, I did not know that's how you harvest the pinion pine nuts. Hey, we're going to add some wine. Oh, finally. Getting to the good stuff. Uh, again, red wine for mushrooms most of the time is a better wine uh, for cooking with than, than white wine. Okay. Um, and I'll do it twice probably. I'll let it absorb it just a little bit. It just gets probably no more than a tablespoon or two there. All right. And once it's really cooked down, I'll, add, I'll do it one more time. It looks like it, I don't know if the right word is reducing, but it really looks like uh, they're just softening up and translucent there. Yeah, that is exactly the right word. Ah, uh, see? Stupid I'm not but you, You've done this before. Oh, I've watched people. Well, it's like last, last month it was uh, someone making a salad. It wasn't nearly as exciting as this. Uh, it was looking good. So what do you think? Is it maybe it's an Italian recipe, recipe would you think, with, with derivations? Um, sure, with some variations. I mean, uh, oregano, garlic, olive oil, pesto, often thought of as, uh, as Italian. Sure. I've done Asian ones with Asian spices. Ah, interesting. So, oh, neat. Well, we should have you back. Actually, maybe we could just change the show from Let's Get Cooking to Let's Get Cooking Mushrooms, in which we could do this every month and get all these variations. Different version every time. I'm telling you. All right, you can see there's less liquid in here now. Yeah. You need a little more pepper. Put in some black pepper. Okay, so let me see if I can do this from memory. Olive oil, butter, garlic, onions, red bell pepper, thyme, rosemary, oregano, basil, basil pesto, red wine, black pepper. Oh, we can do that. You have to test. All right, let's, uh, you know, the uh, the driver's tests at the DMV are getting tougher and tougher, so I'm really glad uh, I was able to answer that one. Nice. This is getting pretty close. Now once this, once I turn this off, it will cool just a second, I'll mix in the feta cheese, All right. and we'll stuff the mushrooms, and then at the top of the mushrooms, on top of that, will be a mixture of the parmesan and the bread. Ah, interesting. Normally, and again, the, the finished ones I do have here to sample and eat, I would, while this is cooking, I would put these in the oven and 
20 minutes to 3.15 just to soften them. So they're not raw. I'm going to just stuff these raw just because we don't have all oh, well, so, so you prepare the mushrooms ahead of time. Just all I do is while it's cooking, I just stick them in the oven with a little bit of olive oil just to get them a little bit softer than they are. Okay. The finished ones that I have brought already are already we're done. So with 20 minutes of 350 before we stop. Right. Okay, got yeah. it. It just makes the mushroom a little these won't be that way since we don't have the oven here. No. Yeah. But it'll, it'll, it'll look the same and the other ones that I have will have the already pre cooked. Now, portobellos. when they harvest the portobello mushrooms, do you think they're also hitting the mushroom tree with a bat? Or maybe it's a different process. I think it's a different process. Yeah, they exactly. grow uh, the yeah. dark. I don't, because I wouldn't want these falling on my head. I think that would be pretty scary at night. And mushrooms fall on your head. Especially the size of a portobello. Well, I like, right? But the portobellos are, you know, I like a lot of mushrooms, the takis, and. Uh, I'm uh, sure we're allowed to say that on TV. <laughs> But they, they hold up their shape and their taste. Uh, people often can call portobellos meaty mm -hmm. because even yeah. when you cook it, they still have some texture. You know, yeah, some texture. Mm -hmm. You choose to see that. Sure. All right. I'm going to turn this off. And you know, when they make uh, veggie burgers, all the time it's a portobello mushroom. They'll put in there and okay. right? Yeah. Right. I'm going to move. Wonderful. This in here. So I have to put this. And you know, it's an interesting thing while Rich does this. Is stuffing the mushroom sounds like it's dirty, but it's not. It's, it's perfectly acceptable, I think, to stuff mushrooms, isn't it? Yes, it is. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. As long as the portobello is uh, agreeable. Agreeable, preheated. <laughs> yes, I, I, see, I see where you're going with that. All right, so we're all sauteed up. Okay, so we're going to let this cool just a little bit. I like putting in the feta in the chunks so it doesn't quite melt in it. So when you bite into it, you've actually got the pieces of feta in there. Uh, yeah. So give that a, a little bit of You put some thought into that whole feta cheese melting thing. I really like to see that. That's good. I try. Yeah, wonderful. All right, well, we're going to have the, uh, the bread crumbs and the Parmesan cheese are mix. OK. So there's a, a blend of both of those on the top. You know, it's funny, when I saw this, I didn't know what the recipe was going to be. I knew you were making stuffed mushrooms, but I thought, well, maybe he's rolling them into a big breaded ball, but this is a really neat way of doing it. So the stuffing will be loose, but this goes on top. Right. Or the bottom, because the mushrooms are upside down, if you don't mind my saying. As long as they don't mind. As they don't mind. But they are, technically, I'm just saying. What kind of get you This is what I was looking for. Oh, there it is, right there. So when you want to stuff the portobellos, uh, you want to put a little olive oil on the bottom. Okay. And normally, as I said, these would have been already cooked a little bit. Just chop sure. it up. And you would normally just brush them with a little bit of olive oil. And you and I were speaking before the show. Easy bake oven, probably not the thing to use. You want to use a real oven. Yeah, but the easy bakes are, 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 are fun for the kids, but uh, they don't generate much heat. No, that's why they don't use easy bake ovens in restaurants, in case you guys are wondering about that. Yeah, kids get that out in the open. Not the restaurants I eat. Right, sure. All right, so we've got uh, 20 minutes at 350. The mushrooms are soft. We'll pretend they are. Let's see what we got here. Okay, we're going to add feta cheese. Okay. The feta cheese I am adding to it has a little bit of basil and a little bit of Italian spicing already in it. Mmm, boy, it's going to be wonderful. But like I said, I don't like over mixing it because I like the feta cheese to be in, in chunks or still in there. Right. So you get a bite of that nice salty feta in the mushroom. Wonderful. My mouth is watering, I must say. You know, if they hadn't been told to be quiet, they would be ooing and eyeing in our studio audience right now, but they were under firm Orders not to ooh and ah. They, I told totally you, ooing and ah. Mm. Yeah, see, uh, now they're ooing and ah. Yeah, a little late, little bit. You got your hit, your cue, but still a little late. I'm just saying. That looks gorgeous. You just can't give help, good help in I'm telling you, yeah, you know, we'll take anyone off the street here. Um, I hope we can get a close-up. These are absolutely beautiful. In, in that red case over there, that insulated case, are the other two finished ones. Well, we're not sharing those with anyone. All right, see. Right, time to get those out. Okay, so we are um, filling this. Let's just see what the next step is, and then we'll take those other ones out. Okay. All right, so we have these. All right, and this is 
is the this is the mixture of Parmesan and uh, the, panko breadcrumbs. Okay, panko, yeah. I'm sure of that. Yeah, and this just has a lot more texture to it. It's a it'll be crunchier, a little more texture, a little crisper. Oh, it's wonderful. Rusty, on top, and then uh, I imagine that this would go into the oven. Is that right? Yes. And uh, uh, 350, 375 for probably about 30, but you want to check it around 15 and 20, just so 30 seconds. That's not very that's much time. Minutes. Oh, oh, minutes. Oh, yeah, well, I can see that. That makes more sense. Yeah, I'd say 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, probably keep an eye on it. it. Yeah, and 20 is often off, uh, enough. And you are doing these in a, uh, maybe either in the, we have a pie plate here, it could be a, um, a sheet or something like that. Sure. Do you have a preference like, on what you uh, when I can, I like using glass. I just have a, I really like using glass over metal for cooking. Could this be something we do on the grill as well? Or no? I've done it on the grill, so yeah. Yeah. And, it real well. and I'm really, because we're talking about mushrooms, I'm just wondering if when you serve these to your guests, if anyone has ever just said no. And, because that must be kind of awkward. Well, once in a while I raise the eyebrow about what type of mushroom I use, but uh, no. no. Generally, people trust that I'm going to be honest with them and let them know these. Mm -hmm. They're not funny mushrooms. No, I, I appreciate that. That's good. <laughs> Okay, so we're on the home stretch here, right, Rich? Are we, are we just about ready? To, just about ready to go in the oven. I'm going to add a little nice. pesto to the top. Ah, nice. Add a little more olive oil to make it a little soupier. Just a little drizzle on the top, and that'll sink in when it's in the oven. All right. That uh, I must say, truly, these are absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. All right, we are ready to go in the oven. 350, 20 minutes, uh, check at 20, maybe up to 30 minutes. Is that what we said? Indeed. All right, good, we got that. All right. so why don't you pop those in the oven, the uh, oven that's down there by your knees. And oh, hey, look at it. We've got an oven down here. Oh, ooh, ow, oh, that's so hot. Yo! That was said like 500. That is a hot. Wait, 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 wait. You better use these. <laughs> Woo! Hot. Let me tell you, that was, that was that's a hot plate. All right, here we have the finished product. Wonderful. So, um, I tell you, that is just a gorgeous meal. I'm totally excited to start doing my shrooms at home. And uh, it's, it's safer when it's at your home. I think it's your own home, and uh, I might even invite friends in as well. And it's we can often, it's often a, uh, a group activity. Well, I'd like to uh, thank Rich Fisher, who is the uh, owner of the glass blowing shop uh, and Ayurvedic Herbs. And that's not easy to say. And producer of the Fringe Festival for showing us how to uh, stuff a portobello mushroom. I think it's just wonderful. Are we allowed to do a round of applause for Rich? <laughs> So, listen, that wraps up another episode of Let's Get Cooking, the number one cooking show on Nevada County Public Access Television, watched by tens, even dozens of people out there online and, and on cable. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, next month, we'll have another mystery chef with another mystery recipe, and we can't wait to learn how to make that. So let's give uh, our thanks and applause to Rich Fisher one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank